fish. That one. Oh. All right, so today it's dedicated to streamers. Uh, I got this new 10 foot sinking poly leader and I've been wanting to try it out. So I only bought one rod and the goal today is to see if I can figure out streamers. Had a fish on. I need to work on my. There's one. There's one. Yes. Wow. This is a nice fish. Louise. I think this is a pike minnow. <laughs> Very nice one though. Wow. Holy crap. That is a huge, huge pike minnow. Oh. It's like, I don't even know how big this is. Uh, 25 inches. <laughs> um, holy crap. So far I can tell the difference with the sinking tip compared to using my floating line and a lot of tippet in the past. Definitely uh, tell it's riding lower in the water column. Oof, and the thump. Jeez, this is crazy. They're like thumping it, but not connecting. I had to reprogram my brain to do a strip set too. Admit, fishing streamers is exciting. The hits are hard. It's a fish it's a swam under my line, and he's turning towards me. That's wild. And this 
is a run I've come up and fished many, many a time, and it's never been very productive for me. I always thought fishing this with streamers would be the ticket. We shall see. this under another spot that I've fished in the past and never got anywhere. Those last two spots have continued their tradition of not being very productive, so this is a spot where I've caught fish in the past. Let's see if I can do it with a streamer. This is like this deep undercut bank. It's always been hard to get deep enough, even uh, an in thing. something. Finally, it's been so long since I've hooked something. Really? Got a trout. Sweet. to these streamer tips. Whoa, whoa. Look okay, here, this is a good fish. Still haven't seen it yet. Where is it? 
Yeah. I think this is a pretty decent fish. Just tried pulling on him a little bit and he's like, nope. There's a glare on the water, I can't even see it. Sweet. That is a nice rainbow. Oh. Yes. Sick. Oh, it's moving. Apparently I have a fish on. Huh. Thought I snagged. Hilarious. I think I might have snagged. Whatever this is. Mm, got it in the mouth. It's golden, so I think it's a sucker fish. It's a sucker fish. Get one of the sucker fish took a streamer. That's crazy. Jeez. Hey everyone, I'm back home. This day has been a long time coming. I've been wanting to set aside a day to dedicate for streamers for a while, but I always have these plans of starting out with nymphs until I get under the fish, and then later I'll switch to streamers, but it just never happens. So after picking up this new fast sinking 10 foot poly leader from Airflow, I made it happen. A uh, link to that leader is down below. I took one rod and a box of streamers so I couldn't back out. I tried to put myself back into my spinner fishing day self and basically tried to fish it like it was a spinner. The plan worked. Uh, the first hole saw tons of action hooking up right away to that monster pike minnow. Now before I go any further, I know there's gonna be comments saying I should kill them, the suckers too, but they're native species and I have not seen a good argument for killing them in anadromous streams like this one. In rivers above dams, there can be an argument made and some rivers like the Columbia actually have bounties for them, but this stream connects straight into the Pacific Ocean. I get the heart of the argument, you're trying to protect the trout and the salmon populations, but I think a better tactic is to spread good fish handling knowledge. If you're releasing a fish, it needs to live. Straight up. You can't kill a fish and expect it to be there tomorrow. Now I know most are just ignorant and they don't know how to handle a trout properly, so what does that look like? The water you're fishing needs to be less than 67 degrees Fahrenheit, so you have to carry a thermometer to know this. Sticking your hand in the water just won't tell you this. Uh, you need to wet your hands before handling the fish. Dry hands removes the protective mucus, and they can die if they don't have that mucus. It means don't drag your fish on the bank and let it flop around on the rocks. It means never using treble hooks. I always loved cutting them off my panther martens and using barbless single siwash hooks instead. The fish don't get their mouths ripped apart, you still land the fish, and you snag way less, so you're not losing those $5 lures all the time. I think if we can teach people these things, you may actually see fish populations grow. But I digress. <laughs> The super fast sinking leader was fantastic. I just had to wait a few moments to get the streamer down in the zone and then I could strip it back to trigger those aggressive eats. 
I still need to work on those strip sets and I'm gathering it doesn't really take much of a set because the fish are eating so aggressively. It's just important not to jerk the rod up and pull the hook out of their mouth. Thinking about jig hooks though, I bet if you just have your finger pinching the line, uh, the fish will just set itself. Uh, what do you guys think? I cut the first three fish on Troutfly's Jigzilla. It's a small sculpin pattern on a jig hook. Uh, link to that down below where you can buy them. I also threw a couple barbell-eyed streamers that were a bit longer and heavier, and I found I was snagging them on the bottom more, having that traditional point-down hook. So at this point, I'm a fan of the jig hooks. Overall, I'm super happy with the leader, and fishing streamers is super exciting with those really aggressive eats. I'll definitely be putting this to the test more this fall. Speaking of fall, check out my first trip to the McLeod last year. I was chasing the October caddis hatch, which I was a little too early for, but be sure to watch to the point where I found those browns.